Hello and welcome to the Kemanas Park Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we'll recap the race card from Saturday, May 25th. Nine races were on offer, including the Race 8 feature event, the I Am Satisfied Trophy. Let's begin with Race 1. This was a three years old and up optional claiming event of five and a half furlongs contest with an eight horse field reduced to seven with a scratch of blue seeds from the three draw. 1100 meters, five and a half furlongs there off. Mule train left at the back early after a poor start. Raw Liquid took off quickly on the outside with a good life. They match strides as they leave the five. Absolute Blue right on their tail end. Just about three lengths separates the first three. So Ganga Jamuna hustled up and asked to get closer. The Grey My Smokey is next and at the back of the field, it is a mule train. They're in the turn for home. They've left the 716th behind them. The Good Life, just the leader, Raw Liquid, running a big one on the outside as they dash past the three. Absolute Blue now finding room in between horses and gaining momentum, and Absolute Blue now picks up that lead. The Good Life holding second. Raw Liquid on the outside is third. Further back to Sir Ganga, Jamuna, My Smokey, and Forget Mule Train as they're at the head of the stretch. Absolute Blue with that lead. The Good Life left three or four lengths back down against the rail, but it's Absolute Blue out in front on the terrific Tevin Foster. He had a peep between his legs. There are no dangers at the moment as they leave the furlong pole behind them. Absolute blue. Sir Ganga Jamuna has run through the field to grab second, but second is what he'll get as absolute blue is absolutely in control. Foster looking behind him all the time. They win by nine or ten over Sir Ganga Jamuna. Then the good life mule train running on snatches fourth. Terrific Tevin Foster getting uh, the win on the first event and that pushes his tally to 57. Start up nearly on 56, 10 clear of Radish Roman who starts off on 46. Now it's up to 57, so it's now 11 wins clear. Tevin Foster over Radish Roman and a fine job there by trainer Ryan Darby getting this one in tip-top shape for the assignment. Ryan Darby had a double on Labor Day as I told you, so he's looking to continue the good form into the Saturday card. And Tevin Foster had a four-timer on Labor Day as well, just two days ago, Thursday, and he starts off the with a bang here. So great going, Tim Foster and the Prince of Claiming, Ryan Darby. Leading rider in the Jockey Championship, Tevin Foster opens the Saturday card with a commanding 11 and 3 quarters of a length win margin aboard the Ryan Darby conditioned Absolute Blue. Race 2 on the Saturday card was a restricted allowance event going a distance of 1300 meters or 6.5 furlongs. Empress Lynx and Benson from the 6 and 7 draws respectively were looking to make it consecutive wins since their last time out. Ready for a start. They're off and racing, very good line. Left at the back of the field, that's Burning Valleys. Benson goes for that lead. And Benson has won the break and is in front. Loyal action coupling up nicely against the rail. In between horses, that's She's My Hedge Fund. About two lengths before we come to Blinking Light, then another two to Exotic Light. Then comes uh, Empress Lynx and racing at the back of the field, the slow starter, that's Burning Valor. They come toward the uh, four furlong point and uh, making the running. That is uh, Loyal Action. Benson attached to Loyal Action's outside. These two are shearing it coming to the three. Then comes racing in third. That is uh, She's My Hedge Fund. Digital Light is right there too. Exotic Light follows. Then comes uh, she Empress Links and racing at the back of the field. That's Burning Valor. But the war continues up front. Benson and Loyal Action. They're at the top of the lane two furlongs to the money it is loyal action right against the rail benson not going away easily it's loyal action in front benson exotic light and also coming on coming on burning valor but it's loyal action in front burning valor now begins to come on nicely it's loyal action still in front it's loyal action and the action pack rain lewis loyal action holding on from burning valor loyal action beats burning valor then comes uh, exotic light then comes uh, She's My Hedge Fund and Exotic Light back and forth. Lol Action uh, makes it a gate to our performance in race number two. Uh, the proofs will be the right choice. And uh, as I mentioned, Solid Golden Farms, Paul Swaby, they had a big day on Labor Day. A 1 2 with Grecian Light running on. The 45 here, we get a better of 20 to 1. Kemp. They were one, two there in that event on Thursday, and they continued the good form onto the Saturday card. Real listed the duties aboard Lowell Action. Lowell Action took them pillow to post. And the connections, Ryan Darby, Tevin Foster, they started off the day with uh, the winning race one, Absolute Blue. 
a four-timer for Tevin Foster on Labor Day. He wins race number one, a double for Ryan Darby on Labor Day. He wins race number one. So the form has spilled over from Labor Day to Saturday today with that uh, four-timer from Foster winning the first race today about Absolute Blue. Double from Ryan Darby wins the first race today with Absolute Blue and uh, Solid Golden Farms and Paul Swaby with that exacto, spanking exacto too. Grecian Light and Kemp, and they win race two here with the lower action. So, uh, kudos to the connections there of the winners of the first two races. 2023 champion jockey Ryan Lewis makes it a gate to wire performance aboard the 9 to 5 bet Loyal Action, a four year old bay coat trained and conditioned by Paul Swaby for owners Solid Golden Farms Limited. The breeder, a man who knows all about speed, Glenn Mills, the maestro. Race 3 was another restricted allowance event, this time going 1200 meters or 6 furlongs, a modest field of 7 set to go postwards, with female jockey Abigail Abel, the mount of trainer Henry Harrison's rum puncher. 1200 meters or 6 furlongs, this is the third of 9, they're off, perfect start. Rum Puncher comes swinging through on the rail to get that early lead. King Air chasing heroin, now moving quickly down into second. King Air backing out into third. Ava Jalen on the outside. Stormer come, fills a sandwich in between horses. Anchorman races toward the back of the field along with... That's Jupiter Man. They leave the half mile and make their way running into that turn, and out in front it is Rum Puncher from Heroin chasing toward the inside King Air. There goes Stormer come, these four in a very tight clump, and Rum Puncher has hit a speed bump and dropped back quickly and is left at the back of the field and now goes down with Abigail Abel on the ground. The leaders have left the 516th, King Air battling for that lead, Heroin now coming with a charge on the outside as they move past the quarter pole. Watch Stormer come now, asked to blow strong down against the rail. In behind them, that is a Jupiter man. Ava Jalen is there and Anchorman toward the extreme outside, but Heroin now grabs the lead and narrow one. King Air continues to fight on down against the rail. It is Heroin battling King Air. These two arrive at the 16th pole. Heroin being pushed out by the rider now begins to go away. And it is Heroin coming away under Uville Pinnock to beat King Air. Then Stormer come and Ava Jalen. Now gets the job done. First time of asking at non wheels of three. You will pay a Sunday for turning back to the dark. And that's a quick double for Heroin at a good price two of six to one. Completing the exact now. 18 to 1 shot, King Air, being exact to pay out there, 5,406. And uh, the triple paid well as well, one make that 7,432. So the early triple, a challenging sequence indeed, and a good payout too. A mild upset by the 6 to 5 bed heroine with jockey Uville Pinnock in the saddle. A struggling King Air with the six time champion jockey Omar Walker had to settle for second. Storm McComb was third, and Ava Jalen in fourth. Race number four was a competitive maiden conditioned event for native bred four year olds and up with a seven horse field declared to go six furlongs. Ryan Lewis was looking to land a double aboard young trainer Rohan Matis cruising again. They're often racing, that's a beautiful line. As a cruising again, blast into an early lead. Demetri P is right there. On Demetri P's outside, that is a Sir Wang Don. Then comes a Lambo Girl racing in fourth as they pass the five. Cruising again, make that clowning around and uh, roaring thunder racing together and racing at the back of the field. That is uh, double the catch. They go past the four and head toward the three and it is Sir Wang Don now assumes the lead. From racing in second, that's cruising again. Sir Wang Don eking out a length and a piece in front passing the three. It's Sir Wang Don cruising again. Then comes Demetri P. Reversing that Lambo girl coming up also coming up that is roaring thunder then comes clowning around But it's Sir Wang Don that brings them into the lane cruising again still chasing in second Sir Wang Don in front and traveling well cruising again as not quit and is still there in second Demetri P is racing in third out wide and trying to come on back that's Lambo girl Also coming on that's clowning around but Sir Wang Don is not messing around and Sir Wang Don begins to streak away from the so Wang Don wrapped up in the end by about six lengths then comes cruising again Demetri P and clowning around 
No problems there for the favorite Sir Wong Don. Richard Henry riding for Trader Patrick Fong and owner of Super Kids Racing Stables. First time Lay 6 at the third, and Sir Wong Don delivers the victory that was expected for a long time. A good win for the favorite Sir Wong Dong sent off at odds of 1 to 2. Jockey Richard Henry in the saddle for trainer Patrick Fong. They completed the six furlong strip in a one minute, 16 and three fifths of a second with a win margin of six lengths. Race five on the card was a restricted allowance event going six and a half furlongs and eight horse fields set to go postward with veteran jockey Roderick Da Costa securing the mount aboard the fixed Gerald Henry condition. She's a Prado, the nine to five favorite in the betting. And they're off. A shorty just misses it, not too far off. Millennium Star comes away blazing with She's Prado as they run past the six. These two are next, separates them. Last Dance is further back, racing on the outside of Dancing with a Cat, now moving into third. Last Dance relegated to fourth. Who done it is in fifth, possibly seven lengths off that lead. Tracked by Amadali running easy at the moment. Principal Tiffany is next, ahead of only one, a surety. They're about to arrive at the half mile and go running into that home bend. And Millennium Star continues to fight with She's Prado. Half a length separates them, dancing with a cat right on their heels. A last dance has made good progress. These are the main contenders as they slip past the three. Who done it now shaken up and asked to go. A gap of five or six to Amadali Ashority and Principal Tiffany now asked to make ground doing so mildly as they'll come into the top of the lane in this the fifth event. They spread right across the track. Millennium Star in the center. She's Prada out wide. Who done it has made up a lot of ground and now looks a danger over on the rail. That's dancing with a cat, but it is Millennium Star put to the right hand stick by Radish Roman. A furlong to go. Millennium Star here now is Who done it kicking in over on the far side and Who done it is going best of them all inside the final 16th. It's Who done it and terrific Tevin Foster and he's done it. He's taken a double. Who done it? He's down in the end wins over Millennium Star. Then she's Prado dancing with a Cat and Ahmed Ali. Who done it got the win there at race number five? Tim Foster on a double. And he started off the day 10 clear of Radish Roman on 56. He's now on 58, so he's now 12 clear of Radish Roman. Radish Roman still on 46 wins. And the exact now with the top two riders, they paid well $881. The leading rider, Tim Foster getting the better off. Radish Roman, who's chasing in second, and you get $524 for the quinella as well. So big buck there for the top two riders. Five ticket count on the regular seat coming into the cash out leg 124 with 6.9 million plus in the net pool. Cat 9 still has three live tickets over 660,000 in that net pool. Remember the jackpot is over 1.5 million. So it could be in treat of a big catch and winner today if they uh, remain intact for at least the next four races. Tevin Foster doing it again aboard the 5 to 2 bet. Who done it? A five year old bay horse trained and conditioned by Arnold Rambley Jr. They stopped the clock in 1 minute 24 seconds flat over the 1300 meters course. It's now time for a break on the Kemanas Highlight Show. On the other side, we'll recap races 6 to 9 from the rest of the Saturday card. Welcome back to the Kemanas Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we continue our recap from race six. This was a restricted allowance event going five furlongs straight, a 13 horse field reduced to 12 with a scratch of Finney from the eight draw. Two notable importies in the lineup, Pretty Caroline breaking from gate four and the workout crew breaking furthest from the rail in gate number 13. Five furlongs straight in the trip, best of luck on all your wagers. The rough right away and the racing. Ava Sunshine gets a flyer in the middle. Bosi is quite prominent. Workout crew is really traveling well and now begins to attack in the middle. Over on the uh, far side and uh, uh, traveling up, that's a Xylophonic Steel, right with Xylophonic Steel. That is a tapping in. Also there, that's Pretty Caroline. And waiver on the far side, that's Shuama the Butcher and a Bad Investment. They're lining up coming to the three furlong point and it is workout crew looks to be on that lead right there too that's tapping in also in the mix 
that is blinking light there after the shoot coming to the furlong pole bosi is begins to come on the premises but it is right there bosi now begins to charge forward and bosi now hits the front coming to the furlong pole it's bosi a half a furlong to go bosi in front bosi in front and begins to pull away Blinking Light running on for second, but Bosi easy in the end. Bosi by about three lengths. Blinking Light is second. Got tight for third between Xylophonic Steel and Ava Sunshine. Also tight for fifth. Simply sensational. And a Princess Aquila. A second win on the card for trainer Arnold Rambley Jr. This time with his four-year-old Philly Bosi with jockey Marshall Porter aboard, beating the likes of Blinking Light, Xylophonic Steel and Ava Sunshine, who finished in fourth position. Race 7 was a major condition event for native bred 3 year olds covering a distance of 6.5 furlongs, a decent field of 8 looking to shake their maiden tags. Princess Fiani, under the mount of Tevin Foster, was getting a lot of attention with a 9 to 5 betting odds on the tote. Start already. They're off. Zulu Warrior. Shelly the Rocket misses it. Shelly the Rocket worst off and left at the back early as they lead the 6. Princess Fiani, just the leader from Mac and Rome. There goes Ballistic Missile now to form the threesome on the inside. Zulu Warrior two lengths in behind them. Hickory Slim races up next. Supremacy as they leave the five races with the Soul Warrior and a long way last and needing to catch up. That's a Shelly the Rocket. They're about to arrive at the half mile and go running into that turn. Ballistic Missile with that lead. Mac and Rome is a length down. Princess Fiani tracks them on the rail and begins to go as they head away now toward the final three. Zulu Warriors next. Supremacy now shaken up and begins to lengthen strides as they leave the three. Hickory Slim in behind them. The Soul Warrior and a long, long way last to Shelly the Rocket, never recovering from the awful beginning. The field will come thundering into the stretch drive. They're at it now. Inside the last quarter, Mac and Rome Points on that lead. Princess Fiani on the rail. Watch Supremacy now closing in on the outside. These three almost in line as they drive toward the furlong pole. Supremacy on the outside. Mac and Rome in between horses and Princess Fiani on the rail. And now Supremacy under the left hand stick picks up the lead. It is Supremacy inside the final 16. Princess Fiani trying to fight back. Also coming on Zulu Warrior, but Supremacy will take it by a length and a half over Zulu Warrior. Then Princess Fiani, Mac and Rome, and Hickory Slim. How about that uh, winner a while ago? The right selection, Supremacy. A half brother to Big Daddy Cool, and uh, he looks to have places to go. Ran green all the way through the stretch drive. Didn't switch leads, and he still won. So he has a lot to learn, still in the process of learning. And uh, he looks a type that should go well over longer distances. So put that one in your notebook uh, for the later races this season over journeys in excess of six and a half furlongs. Radish Roman, otherwise called the Sneaky Fox, puts the 3-5 to five favorite supremacy into full strides and topples the leaders in the final furlong to clinch the win by a marginal length and a half in front of the fast-finishing Zulu Warrior who had to settle for second. Race 8 on the card was the day's feature, the I'm Satisfied Trophy, an open allowance event for 3 year olds and up. A talented 7-horse field with the likes of last year's champion 3 year old and derby winner, Ability, who was expected to make light work of the competition. Start already. They're off for the I'm Satisfied Trophy. Ability just came out behind them. Going for that lead, I am Fred. Toward the outside, Bootylicious now sprinting through as they make their way down the back stretch. I am Fred chasing, Yellowstone right there on the rail, Wall Street Trader hidden from view in between horses, a gift from Ben racing out wide, Ability now says go and begins to make gains on those leaders, Atlantic Convoy is left at the back of the field. They race past the 7th, 16th, and it's a bootylicious who has that lead, Wall Street Trader and I Am Fred, both all in red, these two chasing in earnest. Toward the outside, a gift from Ben, asked to make ground that's ability. A gap opens up to Atlantic Convoy, needing a lot more so, to Yellowstone out of it totally, as they come thundering into the top of the lane, and it is bootylicious, the one to shoot at. Here is I Am Fred, Wall Street Trader left on the outside. Ability asked to make ground down against the rail, it's bootylicious, but I Am Fred now. Now mounting a charge on the outside, Bootylicious fighting off I Am Fred, Ability now sneaking up down against the rail. These three are breast, but only briefly, I Am Fred on the outside, Ability over against the fence, the bobbing heads, this is going to be a driving finish, it's very close. On the rail, Ability, I Am Fred on the outside, then Bootylicious and Wall Street Trader.
an exciting finish there to the I'm Satisfied Trophy, quite fittedly uh, for that fine power by the I'm Satisfied that, that that one came down to the wire. And it was a champion thrill of last season ability. Last year's Jamaica Dad winner and run up in the Mute Man that got the job done in a fine ride there from Tim Foster. And that was first time out for Trinity Future Trinity Riches as well. So congratulations there and orders to the connections of ability getting the job done there. A champion run by last season's Derby winner who now reports for a new barn, a good ride by the jockey Tevin Foster getting ability over the line just in front of I Am Fred by a marginal head to take the day's feature. Saturday's ninth and final was a restricted allowance event for three-year-olds and up an 11 horse field set to go 1100 meters or five and a half furlongs. Tevin Foster who opened the card with a win was looking to close the day aboard trainer Greg Fennell's 5 to 2 bet, Milos. Ready for a start for Michael Sim. This is a night gap. Best of luck on all your wages. They're off and racing. Champion Bubbler steps a bit slow and is left at the back of the field as Burlap goes on that lead. It's Burlap right there, too. That's Big Big Daddy. Out wide. She's my friend is next. Then comes She's my friend. So it's Burlap in front and making the running. Burlap on a Milos racing in second. Right there too that She's my friend. March and Shoot comes next along with Big Big Daddy. Then come a break before we come to power backing out. Also coming on that champion bubbler all for love and left at the back of the field. That's John Crow Jeff there at the top of the lane and it is Milos on the outside. Burlap right against the inside. It's Milos and Burlap. They're fighting for it. Milos pointing with that lead coming to the furlong pole. It's Milos in front. Inspire Force is coming up on the rail and now Inspire Force is trying to grab a hold and Inspire Force grabs a hold of, of Milos. Inspire Force by about three lengths. Milos is second. Then comes Burlap. Got tight for fourth between Power and Champion Bubbler. An inspirational run by the three to one bet inspired force. Radish Roman in the saddle for Hall of Fame and many time champion trainer Philip Fiani, OD. They covered the 1100 meters distance in one minute, six and four fifths of a second. This has been another edition of the Caymanas Park Highlight Show. We'll see you next time. <laughs>